Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how I can create these multiply save games. So when we create a new game we can create a character and when we hit play we go to our first level, we can walk around and when we save the game it saves the player position, the character itself and our inventory. Of course you can easily extend the system, so let's go. First of all, the character editor and the inventory system are already in this project, of course link is in the description. They are not necessary for the save game but shows the potential of the concept. Let's start up with the save game object, so right click, group in class and search for the save game object, this one here. Let's call this game save, open this up. This is very similar to the game instance, so we will start up with the player underscore position. The player position is of course a transform, the second one is the level itself, the level itself is a string. And just to show the potential again, I add up the character with our character structure and our inventory with our item structure as an array. So we can close this one here, again right click, group in class and now we need a game instance, this one here, I already created one, so this is the instance called my instance with our inventory, the hotbar and the character already. So we have to add up the player underscore position as well, again as a transform. Be sure that you go to your project settings maps and modes and add up your instance that you created on the game instance class. Inside our game instance we create a custom event called save game. From save game we say does save game exist. Go from the slot name here, promote to variable. We can keep it like this one. Of course we need a branch to ask. On true we want to load game from slot and connect our slot name here. On false, we of course want to create a save game object. Be sure that you select the game save object that you created. Then we get the player pawn. We get the actor transform. Up here, we want to cast to our game save that we created. We want to set the player position, like this one here, down here as well, like that. After this we get the current level name. Again from the as game save we want to set the level name and just connect it to the return value here. Again from the game save we want to set our character like that. We get the character from the game instance and set it to the game save. We take out the inventory here, go from the game instance again and want to set the inventory. And as you can see we can do this with every variable that we want to save. Of course we have to copy and paste this down here as well and just connect the return value with the targets here. And at the end we go again from the as game save and want to save game to slot. Connect it here, down here as well and we just connect the return value to the save game. We get our slot name again and this will be of course the slot name. Of course we need another custom event called load game. We take out our slot name here, we want to load a game from slot, like this one, then we cast to our game save that we created. The first thing is we want to get our level name, because we want to open the level by name and just connect our level name here. We get the player position. Then we want to set it to the player position of the game instance here. Of course we take out our character as well. So get character as well we can get our inventory. 
And then of course we want to set it to the character of the game instance as well as the inventory. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to extend the system here. Then we need a little delay here of 0.2 seconds. We get our player pawn again and want to set the actor transform and set it to the player position. Compile and save this. So we are done here. We have our save game function and the load game function. We can close this one. The last step is of course a menu where we can actually load our save games. For this we need some widgets. So right click, use interface widget. I already created one. So let's start up with the load screen one. As you can see, it's just a border as a background. We have four buttons that has a text with new game. Let's go to the graph here. The first thing that we need is an custom event called load game saves. We need a sequence with four situations for four save game slots. Of course, you can create more if you want. The first thing is does save game exist? And we just type in game save one. Of course, we need the branch to ask. Then we take out the save text one. We want to set the text here on true and we will set it to save game one. Then we just copy and paste this four times like that. And we will just connect it here and we have to edit these to game save two, game save three and four. And of course we have to replace the save text one with the save text two up here, the save text three and of course the save text four. And this will be save game two, three, and four, let's open up the details of the save button one on click, two, three, and four. Let's put these together here like that. We need again and does save game exist? Go from the slot name and say promote to variable here. Put this down here. Then we want to set the slot name in all situations when we click on a button like that. And inside here, of course, we just copy and paste again the game save names and have to edit this one to game save one, game save two, game save three and four. All of these can connect to the does save game exist like this one. Then we get the game instance. We want to cast to our instance like this one. Then we want to set our slot name of the instance to the slot name of the widget. We need a branch to ask if our save game exists. Then we go from the instance and want to load our game on true. On false, we want to open a level. In this case, my character editor is just the editor. So we are done here as well. Let's go to our main widget. Let's keep it simple. So we just have the start game button and an exit button with the text. Let's go to the graph and call our start game on click and the exit as well. The exit is of course pretty easy. We just have the quit game function here. On start game, we want to create a widget, in this case the load screen widget. Then we call our custom event the load game saves. We want to remove the widget from the parent, in this case our main widget. Then we can add up the widget, so the load screen widget, to the viewport. Compile and save this. Let's go back to our level here. I already placed these camera actor inside the world. Let's go to the details. I set the auto active for player to player zero. So this is the active pawn where we start the game. 
Also, I choose this level here as the main menu. Of course, you can choose whatever you want. Let's go to the level blueprint. We need to begin play. Then we want to create a widget. In this case, the main widget. We get the player controller. We set the show mouse cursor to true. And then we just add it to the viewport. Let's open up our third person character because we need a button where we can save the game. Let's keep it simple and put this on H for example. Then we get our game instance. We cast to our instance that we created. And then we just call the save game function. Compile and save this. Let's see if this works. We hit play. We have the start game. We have our game save slots here. We choose new game. Let's create a character here. We hit play. We can walk around. We can pick up, for example, this flower here. We press E. You can see there's the flower. We press H for game save. When we go back and hit play again, we say start game. We have our save game one here. We load it. The character is on the same position, has the same clothing, and we have our flower. Great! So, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know, and yeah, goodbye!